We are in the middle of Sirsa Omer, leading up now to these uh, final days of Pesach. The question is, uh, first of all, we have this somewhat, sometimes confusing practice. If you have one practice and you read from a sitter that has another, it might be confusing. In some Sidurim, the count is printed as Hayom, for example, if today were the third day, Hayom Shlosh Yomim, Ba Omer, and in some Sidurim it says La Omer. Uh, in the Omer, or uh, to, or relating to the Omer, of the Omer. So, uh, is there a meaningful difference between the two? So, first of all, the post game, um express their various opinions. The Shulchan, for example, prefers La Omer, but he says, whichever one you say, you fulfill your obligation. Uh, my personal practice, based on my father's minhag, is to say Ba Omer. So, is there a difference between the two? Is there is there a substantive difference or implication of meaning, uh, of a meaning difference uh, between the two? So, first of all, we have to look at the mitzvah of Omer and uh, understand, at least in part, what it's about. So, the there is a, um, this, this, the source for uh, the uh, Sirius Omer is the source of, of, for the bringing of the Omer offering, which is, uh, this is in Vayikra, Chav Gimel, Yud, which is 2310. Uh, the Torah says, uh, When you come to the land that I give you, and you will reap its harvest, and you will bring the sheaf of the first fruits of your harvest to the priest. And Chazal say that this is referring to barley. So there is a barley wave offering that's brought at the beginning, uh, at the second night of Pesach. And this actually, according to the Torah, um, when a- after the uh, Omer is brought, then any um, grain product that was produced before then can be eaten. Then There is a prohibition uh, called the Isr Chodosh, which is a prohibition to eat newly grown uh, grain until the Omer is has been brought. The verse in 14 says, uh, You shall eat neither bread nor roasted grain nor fresh grain until this same day, until you have brought until you have brought the offering of God. It is an eternal law for your generations in all of your dwelling places. Um, there is a difference of opinion about whether this applies like the plain meaning of the verse says to all locations, including uh, um, outside Chutz Laaretz, which would include wherever we're oh, listening, wherever this is, whether you're in Eretz Yisrael, outside of Eretz Yisrael. There's a minority opinion, which uh, some rely on uh, to not be careful about this, which is cited by the Bach, which is that it, this law of Chodesh and its opposite, Yashon, which is what happens to new grain after the Omer is brought, it, it takes on the status of Yashon. That is why you see uh, packaging that labels, among other uh, characteristics, you might see uh, labels that say that the flower is Yashan. That means that it was that the um, Omer has passed, the day of the Omer has passed uh, since this was uh, either harvested or took root, etc. There are many different uh, requirements, uh, but they are, in essence, the, the newly grown grain uh, is prohibited to be eaten until the time for the Omer has passed. So now the question is, okay, <clears throat> uh, what about Sirius Omer? Well, that's the next verse. That's uh, uh, 15. And you will count from the day after the, we're going to translate it right now, just say Sabbath. We'll explain that in a minute. From the day that you bring the sheaf of the wave offering, you count seven complete weeks. So there is an obligation to count during the Omer, seven weeks. Sifi Ras Omer, the counting of the Omer. Why does it say Mimachas HaShabbos? This actually, this phrasing has given rise to quite a bit of confusion. And there are some deviant sects that actually said that it meant the day after Shabbos, which means that it starts on a Sunday. That is not our, um, mas- our Masorah. That's not our tradition. Our tradition is that it means the day after Yom Tov. Why is the day of Yom Tov called Shabbos? Well, as my brother Aaron explained to me um, many years ago, he explained that uh, what we do on, on Yom Tov, just like Shabbos, is we cease from all manner of work. Yom Tov is a little bit more lenient in that uh, work that is specifically for Ochel Nefesh, for feeding, for for uh, providing for food is permitted. Um, generally speaking, Milisha, the Elech, from the act of kneading dough and onward, but you can bake, you can cook, etc. on Yom Tov, not on Shabbos. But all the other uh, restrictions apply. Those are restrictions of uh, Malacha, and that's called Shabbos. That's called desisting. So, Mimachas HaShabbos means during the the holiday, but after the day on which 
Malacha is prohi prohibited. In any event, so it looks like it says me uh, the day after the Yom Tov, and it also says Miyom Haviachem is Omer Tnufa from the day that you bring the Omer Hatnufa, the wave offering. So this sounds like the kickoff, the trigger for the obligation to count is the bringing of the Korban Omer. And there's one problem: we don't bring the Korban Omer anymore. So uh, Rashi and other Rishonim, other early authorities, based on uh, a reading of the Gemara of Amemar in the Gemara, says that actually, although there is in concept a biblical obligation mitzvah midor raisa, to count the Omer, it does not apply nowadays, and now it's only zecher lemikdash. Amemar says that we count days, this happens not to be our practice, but we count days and not weeks. We count days and weeks. But Amemar says that we should have a somewhat um, truncated practice of counting. Why? Because it's not in its full blossom. It's not its, in its fullness. Its fullness would be after the Korban Omer is brought, and then you would count, and you would count days and weeks. We don't do that. So according to uh, most Rishonim reading the Gemara, uh, the mitzvah nowadays, even though we do say a bracha, but it's a mitzvah mi de Rabbanon. It is not of biblical force, it's of rabbinic force. Uh, this has certain halachic implications, which we will not discuss now, but at the end of the day, it is zecher le mikdash. It is commemoration of what happened in the base of mikdash, but not the actual performance of the mitzvah. The Rambam, however, formulates this differently. The Rambam says that it's b'chol makom u b'chol zman, that the counting of the Omer applies at, uh, as a mitzvah asay, as an affirmative obligation, Im implicitly in this is that it's a biblical obligation, that applies at all times and all places. So what does the Rambam do with this notion that we don't have the Korban Omer anymore? So the, the question is, what's the, what's the, in today's parlance, the chicken and the egg? What is the cause of what? According to most Rishonim, the, the trigger, the cause for the obligation to count the Omer, is the bringing of the Omer. According to the Rambam, you would say it's the reverse. Even though he does discuss this in the section of his uh, Yad HaZaka that deals with Korbanos, to medium that, that deals with offerings, nevertheless, it is not triggered by the offering, but one could say that the offering is brought to um, mark the beginning of the counting. Why, according to the Rambam, would you count? So there's a Medrash that says, and this is also cited as the rationale for the Rambam's position that the counting is still Midor Rice, even though we don't have uh, the Korban Omer. The Gemara says that when Moshe Rabbeinu was about to take out the Jews, he said, you know what? Look over there in the, in the distant horizon. There's a mountain there. It's called Mount Sinai. And we will be serving. There you will serve God. And they said, when will that be? Impl implying that there will be revelation in Matat Torah, which was very exciting. And the Jews said, when will that be? And he said, in 50 days. So they started counting. So according to the Rambam, says Aruch HaShulchan, the real goal of Sirius HaOmer is counting towards the event of Kabbalah Sator, of the, of the receiving of the Torah, or in our case, the anniversary of, and the, in some small measure, re-experiencing of the uh, receiving of the Torah. So what does this have to do with Ba Omer or La Omer? So Rabbi Yosher Ber Salavechik suggests that if you say such and such, it's, so, it's such and such many days, uh, La Omer, what you're saying is implicitly you're talking about the Korban Omer. Since the, or of the Korban HaOmer. La Omer from the day of the counting of the bringing of the Omer. So uh, if it's Midrabanan, so you would say that because the implicitly it's the bringing of the Korban Omer that triggers the obligation to count. And nowadays, since we don't have a Korban Omer, so we only have the obligation Midrabanan. So if you're saying La Omer, you're acknowledging that it's from the bringing of the Korban Omer, but we're not in a position to bring that. And that's why immediately following bringing the Korban, uh, reciting the Sphira, we say, May the merciful uh, return to us the service of the temple in its proper place. In other words, we're acknowledging that the that the uh, counting is deficient. We also don't say, uh, they say because it's really Zechel Mikdash, and we have some pangs of, uh, of uh, sadness as a result. Now, according to the Rambam, says Rabbi Shabbat Salvechik, um, since it is Midor Isa, we're talking about a period. When we say Ba Omer, we're referring to the period of counting. Because it's not dependent on the bringing of the Omer, of the Korban HaOmer, of the Omer offering, but rather the count is freestanding. It's independent. It's something that we do once we have begun commemorating our physical redemption then we're counting towards our spiritual redemption, and that's why we would say Ba Omer in the period of the Omer, the 49 days leading to the celebration of the anniversary of the receiving of the Torah. 
And it is to that day that we look forward with great anticipation and hopefully we will accomplish much in our own spiritual resolve to learn more, to do more, and eventually to return to Eretz Yisrael so that, according to everybody, the counting of the Omer will be Mida Oraisa. Have a good Shabbos and a good Yom Tov.